Hello everyone and welcome to mental health mini number two, where we're going to focus on the nursing process in mental health care. To start off, the nursing process is something that we use in all fields of nursing. So it's going to be very similar to what you've learned about the nursing process in other courses. The nursing process is a scientific methodology as well as a critical thinking model that enhances patient care and allows nurses to practice to the full scope of their practice. With the new NextGen NCLEX, the nursing process has changed from ADPI to AAPIE. So instead of diagnosis, we have analysis. So the nursing process is assessment, analysis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Another way to look at this is assessment is similar to recognizing cues. Analysis is analysis, analyzing those cues. Planning is prioritizing your hypothesis and generating solutions. Implementation is taking action and evaluation is looking at your outcomes. So to start, when we do our assessment in psychiatric nursing, we pull our assessment from multiple sources. This may be from a physical assessment, a psychosocial assessment, a health history, interviewing the patient, interviewing the patient's family or friends, using our own observation of how the patient acts and behaves within a certain environment, consultation with other members of the patient's healthcare team, both at your facility and in facilities outside of where you work, and then also looking at patient records. Another way that we can approach our assessment is based on the biopsychosocial model. So the biopsychosocial model talks about how there's different areas in somebody's life that can be affected by mental illness. Biologically, there can be physical effects, genetic vulnerabilities, and drug effects that contribute to the symptoms of mental illness. Socially, we can be impacted by our peers, family circumstances, and family relationships. And psychologically, our physical health, coping skills, social skills, family relationships, self-esteem, and mental health can all contribute to our experience of mental illness. And as you can see by the diagram, certain aspects of the biopsychosocial model overlap with each other. By identifying possible causes of different psychiatric symptoms, it can drive us to different areas for treatment. Here are some examples of some assessment tools that we use in psychiatric mental health nursing. First and foremost, we have our mental status exam. The mental status exam can be done with both observation as well as interview. In our observations, we can assess our patient's appearance, speech, eye contact, motor activity, and affect. We can also observe the patient's mood, but we can also gather that through our interactions and our um, interviewing. We're also going to be able to get insight into their cognition, which means their um, orientation, their memory, their attention, and their thought processes. From the sense of perception, we can ask them about hallucinations and delusions. With hallucinations, we may be able to gather that information from the patient, but it is also something that we're typically going to be able to observe as well. From the thoughts, we can assess if they have any suicidal ideation or homicidal ideation, if they have any delusional thought content. When we're assessing suicidal ideation, we wanna be direct and we don't want to use words like, do you want to harm yourself? Because a patient may not see um, suicide as harming themselves, but rather as a way to end the pain. So when we approach a suicide assessment, we want to make sure that we're clear and direct and ask, do you want to kill yourself? If the patient does want to kill themselves, then we would ask, do you have a plan? If they have a plan, do you have the means to carry out the plan? Why do you want to kill yourself? How likely are you to kill yourself? Do you have any protective factors that would stop you from killing yourself? And from there, we can determine the patient's suicide risk and implement interventions as appropriate. Then we can also assess the patient's behavior and if they're cooperative, um, and then we can assess their insight and judgment. The mental status exam can often be quite extensive. So they have created the brief mental status exam. And this focuses primarily on appearance, attitude, behavior, speech, affect, mood, thought process, and thought content. There's also the mini mental state examination. And this examination is primarily used in the older adult population when we're assessing for symptoms of dementia or Alzheimer's. Ultimately, 
as a nurse, you are your main tool for assessment. We don't often use stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, or anything that you would use to assess physical status of a patient, but we're going to use our brain and we're going to use our therapeutic communication and nurse patient relationship to conduct our assessments. Then we move on to analysis, which is analyzing the clues of our assessments. What are typical findings? What are abnormal findings? What are findings that are expected or maybe unexpected? Why did we find those findings? Do any of the abnormal findings correlate with each other? After we've analyzed all of our clues, we're going to prioritize our hypotheses. This is primarily what the nursing diagnosis or nursing problem was prior to the new next gen format for the NCLEX. Then we move on to planning. There's two different things we can plan. We can plan our patient's goals and outcomes, and then we can also plan interventions. When we're planning our patient's outcomes, we want to make sure that we're putting it in SMART goal format. So what does that mean? It means that our goals are specific, that they are measurable, that they're attainable, that they're relevant, and that they're time bound. We always want to make sure that our patient's outcomes are individualized and patient centered. As far as interventions go, we're going to consider the interdisciplinary collaboration that's needed to implement these interventions. We want to make sure that it's patient centered with the help of patient planning, and we can intervene with medications or non pharmacological options. Then we move on to the implementation stage. This is when we take our action and document those actions. Things to consider with implementation is the nurse's level of practice, their education, and any certifications, and if they're qualified to do the implementation that they're asked to. From an interdisciplinary perspective, the nurse is responsible for the coordination of care and possibly case management duties. We're responsible for the health teaching and promotion for our patients. We may be used through consultation, medication management, milieu therapy, psychotherapy, and we can also intervene through therapeutic relationships and counseling. Lastly, we have our evaluation. An evaluation is looking at the success of our interventions. This is going to take us back to our SMART goals, which, like I mentioned, we make measurable and time bound so that we can look at it at a certain time and see if that measurement's been reached to see if that goal was successful in being reached. Um, at the evaluation stage, we're also looking at our care plan to see if it's been resolved if we need to make any changes and go back to the reassessment stage, or if it's just not an appropriate care plan anymore, or if it's not working and we need to totally start from scratch and cancel that care plan. After we've completed our nursing process, we wanna make sure that we're documenting. There's a couple of different approaches for documentation, one being problem-oriented and the other being focused. In a problem-oriented documentation, we use SOAP notes or SOAPy notes. This includes um, documentation of subjective data, objective data, assessments, plans, interventions, and evaluations. Focus charting focuses on a primary issue and is a little bit more condensed than a problem-oriented documentation. There's two different formats that we can use, and that's the DAR format or the PI format. In the DAR format, we're documenting our data, our action, and our response. And in the PI format, we're documenting our problem, our intervention, and our evaluation. Some tools that we can use for applying the nursing process is critical pathways of care, care planning, and concept mapping. Um, Critical pathways of care are different medical protocols, standardized care maps, nursing protocols, and clinical practice guidelines that help to guide and develop our nursing care plans and our interdisciplinary collaboration. A care plan is documentation of our application of the nursing process, and a concept map is a visual documentation of different aspects of the patient's care and experience to try and form connections and to observe where is going to be the best part to intervene. And it also gives us a holistic picture of what's going on with the patient. And that concludes discussion of the nursing process in psychiatric nursing.